Hey guys, my name is Legado and welcome back to Script, the simplified scripting language for bucket servers, which allows you to make plugin-like files in plain English sentences, almost. Last time we covered variables, and I already told you that variables are extremely important in any scripting language. But something that is equally important at least is a conditional statement. A conditional statement, or the if statement, allows your server to make a certain decision based on inputs, and the output will then vary. So I'll dive right in and show you. We're going to make com comparing command, right? Compa uh, command slash compare. We're going to input two numbers. And first we're going to set up some variables. So, the local variable 1 is going to be the first argument, and the local variable 2 is going to be the second argument. We've talked about this. Now, we're going to have two messages. Send the two values are equal. Sorry, I really can't type. It's playing. And then the other message is send the two values are different. Now we want the server to pick one of these two um, messages based on the input and this is where we use the keyword if. And the syntax for that is always if and then a colon and then between the word if and the colon you're going to write your condition so we're just going to say if argument 1 is equal to argument 2. Now we're going to comment this out because we don't want this uh, line of code to run. So remember, use a pound sign and the rest of the line will be a comment. You can also use it within script, like we're over here. We're going to put a comment over here. It's, comment it's going to comment out the parts you play. So anywhere you type a pound sign, it'll comment out the rest of the line. So if we want to keep this part here, don't want to type it over, we're just going to going to put a pound sign in front of it, you see it turns green, it's been commented out, so it's still there, it's just not going to run. So, let's save this, early game, script, reload, messenger plus plus, clear the chat, we're going to compare the values 5 and 5, and it's going to say the two values are equal, because they are. 5 is equal to 5, everyone knows that. However, as you can see, we have not given it any code to run if the two values are not equal to each other because we commented that out. And the reason you have to do it if we um, remove the commenting there. Sorry, I didn't save it. Watch. If we're going to do compare 5 and 5, it's going to output both messages because these are part of the same block, right? They're both after the if. So, we're going to comment that out again. So, I showed you compare 5 and 5, they're equal. However, if we say compare 5 and 6, the two inputs are unequal to each other and simply nothing happens. So, we can keep spamming it and absolutely nothing will happen because we didn't give it any code to run. So, if the first argument is equal to the second argument, do, do something, send this message. Now, else, so if they're unequal, anytime this does not evaluate true, it jumps to else and it's going to print out this message. So we're going to save that again. And now watch. Compare 5 to 5, they're equal. Compare 5 to 7, and it says that the two values are different. So now you can see that the server made a decision over here. And we can go further with that, because we can actually make the server check for another condition over here. So, the two values are 5, and here we're going to say send the two values are equal, but not 5. And we're going to use another if over here. So we're going to say if 1 equals 5, then we're going to run another else. 
So the way it's going to work now is it's going to check the both arguments and it's going to check if they're equal to each other. If this is true, we're going to jump. Um, we're going to jump in, indent one tab, and we come across another conditional statement, and it's going to check if the first argument is equal to five. Then the two values are five, and that obviously both um, values are five because over here it checks if they're equal, right? So if they're equal, both the arguments are the same. Now this conditional statement will only be checked if they're both um, five or anything. If they're the same, it's going to jump over here. It's going to check. Well, if the first argument is going to be um, five, then the second argument is obviously also going to be five. It's going to print out this. Now else we are still within this conditional statement over here so they are equal so we know that the two values are equal but they're not equal to 5 and otherwise the two values are different so again let me show you compare 5 and 5 the two values are 5 compare 6 and 6 the two values are equal but not 5 and if we compare 5 to 6 it's going to say that the two values are different and that is exactly what we wanted too bad that this script is of absolutely no use of us, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete that. This was just to show you what an if statement is. Now we're actually going to put it to some real use over here, and we're going to um, make it so that the um, when you're going to send a PM over here, you may only send it to anyone who is not me. So, this is the part of the script, right? Now we're going to check for my name. If it's not equal to my name, we're going to write an else over here. And otherwise, we're going to say if receiver is equal to Legado, send, and we're going to give it a nice dark red color, you are not allowed to PM receiver. Actually, I'll make this uh, to sender for consistency's sake. So, remember the um, PM command, right? Set sender to player. So, the sender is now going to be the command sender. Set receiver to the first argument, the player argument. Set message to the second argument, which is going to be text. Then we're going to set the last sender of the receiver to the sender. Now we're going to check if the receiver is legado. We're going to give it an error message. And... If it's not legato, else we want the script to run. Now watch. I'm gonna PM myself. I'm gonna send myself number five. You are not allowed to PM legato. Now, what if we change this? What if we made it so that you're not allowed to um, PM Jed? The underscore goes at the back. Well. My bad, it's cons off. So remember, now you're allowed to PM anyone who's not called Jeb. So we're going to PM itself again. You can see that it works. So this is a conditional statement, and you can do lots of cool things with that because you can look at two different things. So we can actually also make it so that the player is not allowed to, let's say, be holding a block of dirt. Send. You may not send private messages. Messages. Learn the type. You're, you may not send private messages while holding dirt. And now we say if sender is holding dirt, you can see English. If the sender is holding dirt, I want that to run. So, watch. We're going to PM myself. I'm not holding any dirt. I can uh, perfectly PM myself. Now, if I give myself a block of dirt, and I'm actually holding it, you may not send private messages while holding dirt. So it can check for any condition over there. You can check if the uh, player is holding 
a piece of dirt. You can just check the values of uh, arguments. And all of these conditions can be found on SKUnity. So anything you can basically check for will be over there. So that is extremely important because, like I told you, you could do permissions, right? You could say permission, pm.use, or any permission, but we can actually also um, make all of this run only if the player has a certain permission. So, if player has permission pm.use, we want all of this code to run over here, else send you do not have permission to send private messages and note that I'm using uh, player instead of sender because sender will only be set to a value if the player has permission because if the player does not have the permission it's not going to run this block of code well, my bad. So the player does not have permission it's not going to run this code so it's never going to know to set sender to player right so, we can check for permissions now. I don't have any permissions managing uh, tools on this um, server, so we're just going to default back to um, op, not op. And what you can actually type out script as well, if you want to. Now, I'm an op, and we've seen the PM run, but I'll show it once again. PM Legato 5, that works. Now, if I deop myself, and we're going to say PM. Legado, hello, you do not have permission to send private messages. And we can actually do a whole lot of stuff with this because you can nest as many if statements as you like. Right? So that's, that's cool. Now, we said that you're not allowed to um, do this, but what if we want to check for something else? So we have permission, at least now we do. So we have permission to use PM, so it's going to run this part of code here. However, we may not send PMs while holding dirt, but what if we want to check something else? We want to disallow it while using brass as well. Now, you would probably think if sender is holding brass, send, you may not send PMs while holding grass. This will work because it's first going to run here if sender is holding dirt. If this is true, it's going to run that code. If not, it's going to jump ahead. If sender is holding grass, that's true, it's going to run that. If that fails, it's going to go over here. However, there's an easier way because in this case, it's going to um, look up both of these. However, we, there's one drawback to this. If the player is holding dirt, and this has to do with lag, because we're going to save ourselves one calculation here. If the sender is holding dirt, it's obviously going to do that. If it's not true, it's going to jump over here. Now, what if it's true, though? The sender is holding grass, it's going to run this block of code, and it's going to go over here, and it's going to check if the uh, sender is holding um grass, right? Sorry, it's holding dirt here. So it's going to go on and check if the sender is holding grass. But what if we don't want this to run? We could say else if. So we already know that the sender is holding dirt. It's going to run this and then it's going to see the keyword else and it says, okay, well, I don't even have to check what's going to come afterwards because this already evaluated as true. So this is going to save you one calculation, and trust me, you won't notice it really in terms of lag, but if you have a lot of scripts with a lot of calculations, a lot of checks to be performed, then it can be very beneficial to actually use if, else if, else. And you can have as many else ifs as you like, so we're going to make another one. Else if, send is holding stone, send, nope, stone is not allowed either. So let's test this. We're going to give ourselves dirt 
brass and stone. So, we have permission because I opened myself. Now it runs just fine. If I'm holding dirt, I'm not allowed to send them holding dirt. With grass, same thing. And with stone, nope, stone is not allowed either. So those are three else if statements. And you can see that the commands are really taking shape. Now obviously, we're not going to be needing this. Because it's a bit weird to check for what a player is holding when sending private messages. But it might actually be very beneficial in other servers. So those are conditional statements. Let me just revert that back to uh, what it was. Conditional statements. Make your server, make a decision. We have the keywords if and else, and you can use a combination of the two to say else if. So, I'll actually put, put an else if in here just so that we have the example else if player has permission rank.admin. So, let's say they're an admin, we give them the permission node rank.admin, then um, we are going to run the same. So, this is obviously a very dirty way of uh, doing it. But it works. There are easier methods uh, for this because now we have if and else if with these uh, two uh, permissions. Now, there are easy ways to do it, but I'm going to keep it simplistic for now just so that you see the um, basics of using conditional statements. And in the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about list variables or arrays and these are a new type of variable that I want to cover and I feel that we really need a um, separate video for these because the list variables can be fairly complicated so yeah I'm gonna end the video right here and in the next video we'll be doing some um, almost advanced stuff because once we have the variables conditionals and array variables or list variables we can do some fairly complicated scripting, so good. You've watched three tutorials so far, and next tutorial is going to be very interesting. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.